And the objectives of the speech is to select the right words and sentence structure, to present ideas clearly and accurately and vividly. The goals are to eliminate jargon and unnecessary words while using rhetorical devices and to emphasize and enhance the ideas. Her speech is titled A Short History of Skis, and it is five to seven minutes long. A short history of skis. So it's snowing. <laughs> and I'm busy installing the new exhibit at the Park City Museum, 50 Years of Park City Skiing. So I thought today I'd take a nostalgic look back at the iconic equipment that changed how we ski today. And those of you that ski probably have your own personal list of skis that are your favorites, but there are some real milestones that shaped how we ski today. Someone back in time invented skis, wood planks that attach to your feet. Thank goodness, in 1947, Howard Head decided to try skiing. He found the wood skis very heavy and very clumsy, and you and I would have given up. But instead, Howard Head quit his job and decided to live off his poker winnings and invent a new ski. Howard was an aircraft engineer, and he reasoned that if aluminum was good enough for airplanes, it was good enough for skis. And his new ski was a sandwich of two sheets of aluminum with a filling of plywood. He incorporated the Head Skiing Company in 1950, and soon Head Standards were the standard skis in lift lines across the world. In 1960, he had 60% of the ski market. Meanwhile, Rosinol, <laughs> was experimenting with another World War II era invention, fiberglass. And their skis, the Rosinol Strato, Strato is Italian for layers, consisted of layers of wood and fiberglass. And the new materials allowed for color. So by the 1970s, skiing was this crazy uh, multicolored sport and the equipment the skis featured bright graphics. Inventors seldom, however, get everything right, and the shape and the form of the skis was essentially the same as the wood ones. Two things happened to push skiing into the modern era. The first one was snowboarding. Jake Burton was hurtling down the slopes on hourglass-shaped pieces of plywood. And Ingmar's Denmark lost to Phil Mayer. Of course, Europeans are infected with the belief that Europeans are the best skiers. <laughs> so Elan, Ingmar's Denmark ski company, needed to develop a faster ski with better turning ability. And they came up with an absurdly simple solution, and that was side cut. And that's my challenge, because speech number four is avoid jargon. And I've just run right up against this word side cut. <laughs> so, got my handy dandy ski for a little demonstration here. You guys will be able to see. But you'll see when I lay the ski on the table that there's a piece in here that's been cut from the side of the ski. Right? So it's the side cut. And if you bend the ski, you wait it in the middle, the ski along that edge forms a curve. And you can carve a turn. So in 1987, Elan released a ski called the SCX, the Extreme Side Cut. And the competition between Stenmark and Mare heated up. And in 1993, they released a version for the masses. And the ski revolution had begun. 
So now everybody can carve a turn. And skis are short and are shaped. And that's my history of short skis. Thank <laughs> you.